This is Dark Ruler 1030 here, and yesterday we all know that the unfortunate passing of Whitney Houston passed, um, and it was it was really bad. You know, for me it was bad. It was really bad for me because, you know, I may be a young guy, and it may <clears throat> people may think that, you know, I was just a little kid. You know, this I still listen to Whitney Houston. I listen to Michael Jackson. I listen to all the people back in the day. I listen to the Beatles. You know, I prefer older music more than newer music. Um, I like new music, don't get me wrong, but, you know, it's just that there, I'm a, I am love lyrics. You know, I love a lot of lyrics. And when I listen to these lyrics of certain songs, some of them, like especially the newer ones, they're repeating themselves or like Nicki Minaj's, for example, Stupid Ho. As catchy as a song as it is, she's saying, you're a stupid ho. You a you stupid ho. You're a stupid hoe. You you're a stupid hoe. You're a stupid hoe. Yeah, you're, you're a stupid hoe. You're a stupid hoe. You're 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 seriously. I mean, come on. I mean, um, I don't know. I don't know. See, Mike was. Um, I can't even begin to explain. I hate that this happens to my to me all the time. Um, Mike was all upset when I told him yesterday. Like he wasn't upset, like crying. Like he was just upset like he was yelling and he was getting really upset about it and he's like saying she killed herself and she did drugs and you know all this stuff like that he was saying a whole bunch of different things but then this morning he comes home from work and it was he like like he started like he posted up a, a facebook status saying that i guess it finally hit him that she's dead and mike was in love with Whitney Houston. He loved her. She, he said that when, back when he was struggling to come out and, you know, when he was in high school and Whitney Houston came out and he always used to listen to her and he said that, he, that her songs gave him, you know, a lot of hope, which he gave me a lot of hope too. I remember that the greatest love of all was my high school's graduation song. And the greatest love of all, of all was one of his school gra uh, songs. I think... I don't remember exactly when he said it was, but um, I think he said it was the sixth grade or a little bit before that. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but Whitney Houston is definitely, I don't even know what to say. I mean, he, he was playing some of her songs and it really hit him and he started to cry. I'm like, it was completely different from yesterday. Like he was just really angry at her. And he started crying. He says, I'm going to be mad if I find out that that autopsy said that she killed herself, you know, to drugs, that she overdosed on drugs. And it's like, what does all those lyrics mean that she said that, you know, after all my strength is gone or I believe the children are a future and things like that. He listens to the lyrics and then he's like, you know, because me and Mike, we listen to lyrics of songs. And some songs really touch us, you know, like... Uh, Beatles, let it be. As simple as a melody as it is for me, as simple as a song that it may be, it is a very powerful song to me. Just the music, everything. Everything Michael Jackson ever sung, everything Whitney Houston ever sung, Mariah Carey, Elton John, you know, all these people had lyrics that pretty much saved my life, you know? It, music is what if it wasn't for music, I probably wouldn't be alive now. You know, I had other reasons to be alive, but music got me through my weight loss. Music got me through, you know, the dark, tough times. You know, when I was angry, I would listen to Eminem. When I was, you know, happy and in a dancing mood, I'd listen to Michael Jackson. You know, it it's very difficult. And watching these Grammys, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Um, but we both cried, and um, Mike's favorite song was Miracle, which I believe was on the Bodyguard soundtrack. And he says that he likes that better than I Will Always Love You. He says that Whitney, Whitney didn't get enough credit for her song Miracle because that's emotionally a more powerful song, which I heard it, and I have to agree it was. Um, it's just... People recognize Whitney Houston's I Will Always Love You as the part where she sings and I, and then she has that high note and people get really attached to it. And as great of lyrics as that has, 
it's just it's I can't believe it it's just it's so saddening that this had to happen I mean I understand that she was on drugs people are gonna say drugs kill people are gonna say a lot of ignorant things you know people are gonna say you know she chose her she chose her path if that's what she chose to do she chose to do to drugs and she chose to you know but I don't know what's going on I haven't looked up the internet I was pretty much sitting here watching death note and just trying to take my mind off of a bunch of things I haven't listened to a Whitney song until this morning and that's it didn't look up any Vita news nothing I just was just here and just you know my kind of went to sleep early and it just made a he was just really devastated and it's just it's sad and I'm telling him look you know your image of Whitney Houston isn't dead you know I mean I'm telling you that you didn't know her personally and if you did it probably could have ruined everything but if you knew her through the music and through the lyrics those songs are still there they're not dead you know they'll live forever and only you can keep Whitney Houston alive you know you can keep Michael Jackson alive you know it's just it's 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 sad so we're gonna be watching the Grammys I don't it approximately starts like in about an hour and 15 minutes so I'm excited about it I'm gonna be a little sad I had to brace myself <laughs> but um yeah I'm just I can't believe that this happened just to, to her she was just too young I thought that she was getting better you know I thought that she was supposed to have a performance at the Grammys tonight with Brandy and Monica at least that's what Mike told me um, one of my favorite songs by her is what she does with uh, Mariah Carey and it was there can be miracles and that helped me through a lot I remember that when I first heard that song it was just it was it was very deep it was deep and every single one of her songs kind of made me cry like her serious songs and um, she truly is one of the greatest voices of of all time and it's sad that we got people and not to not to uh, you know count them out because they do have their talents and you know they can do a lot of what I can't do like for Nicki Minaj and Lil Wayne and Drake and Justin Bieber and and you know these new generation people sorry I'm sorry this is now the kids generation and unfortunately the older generation is gonna die out and it's sad I, you know because I'm scared that I'm never going to hear a song that is going to be lyrically good ever again. Like the future is not going to have any meaningful songs anymore. Like I believe that, you know, there's going to be a song every now and then, but it's not going to be as frequent. Like the 80s had a lot of music like that, you know, it had a lot of deep meaning music, a lot of, a lot of it, even in rock songs. I mean, in the 90s, early 90s had it. And then all of a sudden, 2000 started to come around, or like, and I don't know where the hell it went, but this new hip hop, pop, whatever it's called, took over. And now it's all of this dance moves like, teach me how to Dougie, teach me how to jerk, teach me how to reject, teach me how to whatever. Um, I'm sexy and I know it, you know. And those are catchy songs, they're all catchy songs, and they're all fun to dance to, and things like that. But... You know, I'm a lyric man, and I like listening to lyrics, so I guess I'm going to have to stick with Josh Groban and Michael Buble for right now, and, you know, older songs. Um, but anyways, guys, this has been Dark Roller 1030 here, and, you know, peace out. <laughs>